season. Hired Ben McAdoo. He got fired with a month left in his second season, along yep. with GM Jerry Reese. They hired Dave Gettleman as GM, Pat Shermer as head coach, fired Shermer after two years, replaced him with Judge, and two years later, Gettleman and Judge are both out. So that's been quite the run yeah. for Mara and the Giants. D. Wood, I don't know where to start here. How do you fix the New York Giants? Well, listen, this is a family-run organization. You know, John Marr and, and, and company, they run the organization. And when you've, when you've achieved this level of futility that the New York Giants have accomplished, I mean, listen, everyone, everyone always looked at, you know, between the Giants and Jets, always looked the Giants was the big brother in the town. Well, now, guess what? The Giants are the embarrassment in this town. The Jets the one, are the ones that seem like they have a plan and, and, and moving in the right direction. I think they have to, from top to bottom, reevaluate everything in that organization, how they go about doing things, all the processes that they go about as far as hiring and everything in that organization. Because right now, it, it, that's man, that's a tough looking job right now. I'm sorry. You know, it's interesting, though, you say that because they are interviewing a lot of GM candidates who have no connection to the organization. And that is unusual. The last time they hired a GM that had never worked there before was 1979 when they brought in George Young. So, yeah. Lewis, when you look at the Giants, like, what is the, what, what's the deal there? What's the most important thing for them to be focused on right now? It'll, it has to start, Dan, with philosophical alignment between whoever ultimately is going to be the general manager and then the person who he's going to spend the most time with outside of ownership, which is the head coach. And look, it's, it's really, to me, it's always been about a three-phase process, you know, that you're, that you're walking in lockstep together, meaning GM and head coach. It's the scouting and evaluation phase, which is when you're just looking at players, whether it be in the college ranks or you're looking at potential free agents for the upcoming free agent season, it's about the valuation and selection of players, meaning what kind of price do you want to pay for the players that you're trying to get? And then ultimately, how do you go about getting them, whether it be moving up and down the draft board, diving into free agency in the first you know, few days of free agency or waiting? And then it's about development and, and implementation and utilization. How do you develop these guys and get them to play on the football field? In all those three phases, the head coach and the general manager have to be in lockstep and see it exactly the same way. But backing it up even more, you have to make sure that you pair the right two people together, which means you got to know exactly what it is that you are looking for in those two individuals. And this has always been disjointed over the past couple of years in the people that they have selected, and the results speak for themselves. Yeah, and I think we can all agree. They're, they're one of the more traditional type of organizations. Mm -hmm. I think we still all have tons of respect for what they've been able to accomplish over the years. And, you know, I, I think because they had so much, so much success Historically, they tend to just go with that formula that works for them, right? This is where we were good. Let's just run that back again. The fact that they're speaking to GMs that have nothing to do with the organization or have never been, I think is a really good start. If we, if we want to be optimistic about perhaps the decision-making going forward, this is a good first step for the Giants, looking outside the box. But, you know, I think you take a look around the NFL. You look at the head coaches and the GMs that are successful. I think if ownership really dives into what's working around the league. Those type of personalities and those type of GMs, I think that'll give the New York Giants some direction in the future because the old way of doing it has proved it hasn't worked for them the last few years. They are the type that need to now progress and change themselves and grow in order to keep up with the rest of the league. Yeah. And I think, I think you know, when you listen to Mara's interview yesterday, I think he was really speaking out to the general manager prospects and the head coaching prospects to kind of dispel some, 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 some um, ideas that was going on about the impact of his brother, who, you know, who's going to make the decisions, you know, the, the, the power structure. And I think, you know, this is a team that needs to go with a traditional coach, a retread, somebody that's going to walk into that locker room because there's a lot of veterans in that locker room. You know, you're going to inherit a salary cap mess that you're going to have to get rid of, but you're going to have to go in there with instant credibility. You can't have a first-time coach that's learning on the job. You have to have a coach that's been there, done that, that's going to get the respect of these veterans. And then this may be something where you're, you're starting to cut guys and get a better salary cap situation going forward. Just Lots fix the of offensive work. line. Just fix the offensive well, line. Well, right. That's been a while. Look. <laughs> Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.